<clears throat> okay, so I've adjusted some of the aspects to make this a little bit lighter. People can play my videos are too dark. Actually, above me in my uh, ceiling fan, there's spots for four lights. I only put bulbs in two, otherwise it gets too hot in here. <clears throat> so, in the past, I used to do lots of wrestlers versus wrestler sorts of scenarios. And someone asked me to do one with Shawn Michaels and Daniel Bryan. I do these in a similar method to how I do my superhero ones, but I do, I almost go overboard, I do an 11 point system. Probably thinking, why 11 points? Because when it comes to professional wrestling, it's more than just the, the physical aspect. I also wanted to include some of the psychological aspects, as well as the crowd as well. So, I have my boards up in front of me. Now I take these two guys as best as I can at the overall height of their popularity and their overall physical skills. So I do this through 11 points. Strength, which guy's stronger? Speed, which guy's faster? Endurance, this is a lot more to do with you know, when it comes to like a really long match. You know, who's not going to get winded? Toughness. You know, how much of an absolute beating have I seen somebody take in the ring and still get up from it? Now we get to striking. This is pretty much you know, how well do you punch, kick, elbow, knee, grappling. This is more of your this is more of your suplexes, this is your slam. This is the moves that you do essentially from a, a clinch. Here's your basic throws. Submissions. You know, this is your this is your cross faces. This is your this is your submissions that lead to taps. High flying. This is your La Planche, this is your Osai Moon Salt, this is your anything anything that you actually leave the ground. I actually have case also included drop kicks. Anything that actually has you leaving your feet in a physical manner. Then we get into the more psychological aspects. How over are you with the crowd? What's your overall ring psychology? And then finally, what are your overall mic work skills? <clears throat> so we'll get right into this one. I rock if you were to take Shawn Michaels more in his prime. So we're looking at shortly around the time where he was beginning DX. I'm looking at the beginning of this time, so this is this is before his back had fully gone out on him. Because that's just around the time when he still had a really solid feud going on with someone like Bret Hart, and he was still performing at a very high level. It wasn't until more towards the end of the DX when his back was pretty much shot and he couldn't do anything. So I'm going with that. That puts him actually past the Iron Man match phase. Actually, hmm. Would that have been the height of his popularity and his best overall physical acclimates or doing more along the lines of the Iron Man age? You know, how about this? I'm going to take a step back. I'll put him more towards just past the Iron Man match. So he's not quite into his full heel persona, but he still is kind of in the good guy persona. Which is what people predominantly know him as. And Daniel Bryan, ironically, his best days are pretty much right now. Action's being kind of bizarre. <clears throat> so we're right into this. Strength. This is one of the very few times where Shawn Michaels is stronger than his opponent. Now we're going to look at speed. Shawn Michaels at this time was fast. Daniel Bryan, however, is a smaller guy, and he is ridiculously fast. Now if you look at overall endurance... You know, look at this time, Daniel Bryan had a tremendous amount of hour-long matches in Ring of Honor. He's changed his body style since then. He's no longer as, as thin as he used to be. He's no longer, no longer as wiry. Can he still put on probably an hour-long match? Potentially, but that's really not what normally happens now in the E. I'm going with Shawn Michaels just past the Iron Man match. So we know at this point in time Shawn Michaels can easily handle an hour-long match. Now, I'd say Daniel Bryan couldn't, but he hasn't done one in quite some time. You know, he's quite a few years removed from his Ring of Honor days. Toughness. You know, around this time, when you look at the amount of amount of physical damage they're putting on their bodies, Daniel Bryan is going out there and whooping the crap out of his body day in and day out. I mean, to, to quote, quote JBL, he's wrestling in someone else's body. Now we're looking at striking. Ironically for striking, Shawn Michaels is really good at his day and age, but you have a mixed martial arts style influence currently in Daniel Bryan. Grappling. And around this time, this is when Shawn Michaels did a tremendous amount of battling against someone like Bret Hart. 
but Bret Hart at that time was about your only really serious grappler at that time. Or Daniel Bryan. You know, he's taken on people that still have some decent overall grappling skills. You know, had this been the time when, you know, Shawn Michaels, towards the second or third resurgence in his career, when he's taken on people like Chris Benoit, you know, potentially. But now when it comes to overall grappling skills, I'm definitely going to have to give this to Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan has a lot more clean, crisp grappling skills. He gets to display them relatively often, but he's still got some pretty solid skills. Submissions. You know, around this point in time, I really didn't see a lot of submission styles predominantly in the E, where one of Daniel Bryan's finishers, which he still uses infrequently, is of course the label lock, or the yes lock. So he still has a much greater depth when it comes to overall submission work. Now we're at high flying. Yeah, Daniel Bryan, great job when he's leaving his feet. However, if you've ever seen some of Shawn Michaels' moonsaults he was hitting at this point in time, they were as picture perfect as you would ever want them. Now we're at over with the crowd. Ironically around this time, this is where it gets really bizarre, Shawn Michaels was very over with the crowd. But if you've heard Seattle during the 2013 Slammies, that crowd was nuts for Daniel Bryan. So over with the crowd at their heights, I have to go with Daniel Bryan at this time. Even if I were to go with, if I were to go with a DX era Shawn Michaels, you know, then you're looking at probably a flop of, of endurance, going from Shawn Michaels to Daniel Bryan, and over with the crowd probably heading more towards Shawn Michaels, just from overall crowd reaction. So now looking at ring psychology, Daniel Bryan pretty good in the ring, tells a decent story that Shawn Michaels just had so much more charisma when it came to overall in-ring performance that he really, really knows how to perfectly sell match. And if he wants to, he can oversell for you, make you look like a doofus, like he did to, you know, Hulk Hogan. And then finally it comes to mic work. You know, Daniel Bryan, decent on the mic. I don't think he's ever hit that level that Shawn Michaels get hit on the mic. So if these two guys were to fight this again as post Iron Man match era versus current era Daniel Bryan, I picture Daniel Bryan taking the majority of these matches. Like let's say it was an Iron Man match. I picture this one probably being a zero zero going into overtime with Daniel Bryan getting getting that last measure of victory. Now of course I'm looking at this being DX era Shawn Michaels. You know, his endurance would have been less of Daniel Bryan right now, just given the style of matches. But he probably would have been slightly more over with the crowd. Slightly. Because DX era Shawn Michaels was the most important thing going on in the E at the time. Which is kind of sad, seeing that Daniel Bryan, however, is not the main guy in the E. But when you listen to a live crowd, there's no reason why he isn't.